the main street, street manager for the record is not signing the paper. Right, but that you all signed. Okay. Just saying that. Okay. okay, well, we will start the meeting with the uh, approval of the minutes from the August meeting. Did anybody have any uh, additions or corrections to make? Sorry, did you say that child care facility is not happening now? Okay. And that's from like that someplace? Okay. Yes. Sorry. Second. Yep, I second that. Okay, our new business today is uh, case number. Oh, I forgot. Hi, I'm sorry. <laughs> Every I know, that's why I forgot about this it. It's my favorite so, part of the meeting. I know. I don't I'd like to introduce our new assistant town administrator, Janine Harrington, and also our new Main Street manager, Jennifer Bittner. We also have a new treasurer, uh, Sharon Strand. She's not here here today, but she's in one of the new offices up here. So we're really happy to have all of them. Um, uh, so we actually need to go back to the September town council meeting. And um, at that meeting, we um, heard about the Middle Passage Ceremonies and Fort Parker's Project, which is a uh, group that we are working with that are um, discuss the possibility of placing a marker at Leonardtown War to honor the two million captive um, Africans that perished during the transatlantic crossing. And it's known as the Middle Passage. Um, project and Sutterly was one of the first ones and they got their marker in 2012. There's some recent um, discoveries about um, the history of the war and so they would like to place a marker there so we've been working with them for a year or so that looks like it's moving forward. We also uh, awarded the bid for our new water tower at Meadows at Town Run 2 which is on the donated land at the back of the Meadows 2 uh, development uh, to Landmark and uh, they are getting ready to get started any time now. And the low bid was $6,899,000, which is, of course, was much more than we expected in the today's environment. Um, we also, I did a significant project and grant update as well. Uh, Grant-wise, we've been submitting a lot of uh, grant applications. We um, recently purchased the lot down at the war for the uh, some of the being behind the last house on the left. We submitted a two hundred fifty thousand dollar community legacy grant to uh, for the construction of that parking lot. We also are on our fifth round right now of facade grants, and we applied for additional money. We've been, we've been getting fifty thousand dollars a year and regranting it to the local businesses. And this year we've applied for 100,000, so we're looking at maybe doing some bigger projects. We've had probably uh, 40 uh, small projects over the last five years um, for, with those facade grants. It's really made a difference in the downtown. Uh, we also uh, received a public art master plan grant for 18,000 just recently. We're going to really look at um, trying to get a plan for what public art, because we have a lot of people asking for murals and such. But we want to make sure that, that it kind of all works together and we actually plan out what we want to do. We also received the Project Restore grant. I think we talked about it in a previous um, meeting for $266,800. <coughs> and that went to Botanic. And then uh, Jim Hiles um, has purchased the, purchased the building, uh, Old David's Flowers building on Fenwick Street. So those two received the Project Restore grant. Uh, we also submitted a $400,000 community parks and playground grant to upgrade the uh, wharf parking lot that's existing and try to add a, a turnaround there for larger vehicles. Um, we also have been working on a comprehensive plan, which is, needs to be updated every 10 years. Our last plan was in 2010, and um, both Doug and Sean are on that committee. That will be um, coming forward. We had a couple meetings um, last month. One was a public meeting, um, just to kind of explain what the comp, comp plan is and what we're updating. And uh, we'll be having a public hearing before you all, probably in January, and you make a recommendation to town council in um, February is what our goal is. We're, we 
we've been working furiously on it. We uh, have a meeting this week with the committee trying to wrap it up and get it uh, sent over to the state by the end of this month because they have a 60-day review period. And it really looks at a lot of different elements, um, and, and one of them important is where we want to grow and for the outside of the, within town. I have a lot of annexations that are people reaching out to us. I've uh, kind of put a stop to those right now until we finish the update on the pump plan to make sure where we really want to grow and uh, what types of growth we want to see. So that's an important project um, that we're working on, and you will be seeing that shortly um, for a public hearing, but you're welcome to come to any of the um, other meetings that we have with the, the public meetings. Um, and then our October meeting, we just had a couple of liquor license letter, letters of support for Botanic Cafe and TJ's Cove, which is a new restaurant that is hopefully coming to the old Slice House building on Lawrence Avenue, um, seafood and steak restaurant. We also extended our water and sewer maintenance contract with Fulton Landscaping, and we extended our elevator contract for this building. And then just last month, just, just in the November meeting, November 12th, we had a public hearing on ordinance number 225, which is an increase of our water impact fee from uh, $3,000 to uh, $6,000. These fees are um, paid for cost of any growth-related project. I just talked about the water tower and how expensive that was, and we also have to drill a new well. So these fees are collected to pay for that growth so that the existing residents don't have to pay for growth-related projects. And that did pass and um, will be effective on December 2nd if there's no, um, nothing that comes out against that. And then uh, ordinance number 226 also passed, which is repealing the admissions and amusement tax that the town has been collecting. Um, we instituted that tax in 1972, and uh, it's not a required tax. It's for uh, any uh, business that collects admission uh, or and has amusements and that definition has changed over the years so much and the state definition is very outdated there's a lot of confusion about what businesses need to pay and what businesses don't we already waive it in the downtown of arts and entertainment district it's one of the benefits of being an arts and entertainment district so most of our um, admissions and amusement tax is already being waived in the downtown it's a very small, we, the most we've ever collected is like $200 back in FY23. So it's not worth the aggravation and people just not understanding it, who's supposed to pay it and who's not. So we're just abolishing that at this time. We can always uh, readdress it if there's a, a different need in the future. And oh, we also um, issued a uh, contract for a, um, an architect to redesign the uh, food hall that we got a proposal on at the downtown work. In early 2024, we had put out an RFI to, to build a food hall at the work. We only received one proposal, but we're still working with that person. Um, they had originally designed a three-story, 18,640 square foot building. The estimates for the construction of that were just so much that they really it wasn't fe economically feasible. So we um, met with some consultant that build and run food halls across the country. We made some design changes um, to add some public space and some additional use and cut the food hall way back. And uh, so it's just going to go to the architect and council approved for them to redo, redo the drawings with this new configuration and then we'll bring the plan forward um, for public review and um, see if it is able to proceed. Question: Is that still a little bit three stories high? Um, we, you know, we, we actually the third story was just a small section, more like a deck on top, really. It was really uh, event space on the second floor, and the first floor was the food hall. Um, so we've cut down, we've cut off that top uh, decking section uh, in this front. That was the on the left hand side. side. Yes, where the, the concrete is, mm -hmm. where the concrete pad is still there. So but I think it's probably going to be more than two stories. Is, is the, the town, town paying for it? Why not? No. So we put out the RFI. We own the land. And um, the proposal was either a long-term lease on the land or purchase of the land. Um, but we've uh, 
would not be able to sell it. We, we could do a, like a 50 year lease or something like that. Uh, we had a number of people came that were interested in it, but we ended up just getting the one proposal. So it just hasn't gone through the process yet because um, the committee that's working on it, it really just wasn't feasible how it was proposed um, for the group to, to be able to fund it. So um, hopefully it was a smaller building, and it really was too many vendors anyway. It, they had like 14 vendors shown, and um, the consultants are saying more like six or seven vendors is all you would really want in a food hall down there. So hopefully um, this, will, this will work, we'll get some favorable numbers, and um, it will be something that the private sector can build. Would this be permanent vendors or would they? Well, they can rotate out. It kind of like Shepherd's Old Field does, where they have different vendor spaces and they can come and go. Um, you know, it could be local restaurants want to do something down at the wharf temporarily. Um, there's, there's a number of different options. They're all over the country now. It's very, very popular. Okay, thank you. Quick, quick question, follow-up question on that. Um, is that any um, plans that we see for that? Is that going to be in um, conjunction with, like, surface parking area or so that's in the critical area we can't pave the parking area i know that was an election comment that you know why haven't we paved that it's because we can't pave the parking down there but we, we are going to try to um, resurface like something down there we may do a pervious paver or something like that and then the new parking lot will probably definitely be pervious paver We'll go to Mrs. Which is uh, page number 033 34 this year. Evan Storyville. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Members. So this property is located uh, just uh, north of the existing identity or the sheriff's property and to the east of the state borders. <coughs> What we request is a concept approval for a site development plan for a two phase project. Phase one being the Evelyn storage facility, which is 20,611 square foot. And the second phase would be the 20, or actually it's 52,521 square foot. Uh, the consultant is KCI Technologies. The property is uh, uh, St. Mary's County Governmental Center. Uh, the total property where the Governmental Center Complex is is 85 acres, and it's an so institutional office district. So, as I said, the applicant is requesting concept approval for a two-phase project. Phase one consists of a new sheriff's evidence storage building, which consists of a 20,611 square foot building with associated park, parking and public infrastructure. Phase two consists of a two-story 52,521 square foot new sheriff's headquarters. Now, keep in mind that this phase two uh, is just the pad site only. They're not intent on doing any construction other than the public infrastructure and parking uh, with phase one. Okay. So the proposed site is located on, as I said, on the north side of the existing sheriff's building. The proposed new sheriff's evidence storage building is intended to store impound vehicles, evidence for investigations and cases conducted by the sheriff's department. Phase two is to provide a new sheriff's department headquarters facility for deputies and security staff. The proposed project is to be constructed, as I said, in two phases. Phase one is to Construct the sheriff's evidence storage building, parking for both phases in phase one and two. This would include all public utilities facilities to address all required stormwater management, fencing, and required landscaping. During construction of phase one, the building pad for the headquarters site, uh, phase two, would be completed. The headquarters building would need to obtain final Planning Commission approval in a separate approval process with the Town Planning Commission. The proposed parking area of the entire site will consist of the following breakdown. The evidence building, phase one, 
private parking provided is 24 regular parking spots, two handicapped parking spots, and 133 impound parking spots. The sheriff's headquarters phase two would consist of 20 parking spots, two handicapped, and 214 private spots with eight handicapped spaces. Per chapter 155, 55 chart B, the required parking spaces for this type of use is one per 300 square foot. Based on chart B of said ordinance, the total building areas combined is 73,132 square foot. Therefore, the site is required to have 244 parking spots. The current proposed design exceeds the ordinance requirement by 159 parking spots. The proposed facility is to be used by mostly sheriff's department deputies and supporting staff and the police vehicles to support that staff. Per Chapter 155.46D and E, Landscaping, the consultant has to meet these requirements by providing 61 canopy trees, 5, 25 ornamental trees, and 13 evergreens, and 47 shrubs. Buffering and screening has been proposed between parking lots and adjoining uses and between institutional zoning and residential zoning. Per the Letter Town Ordinance Chapter 155-116, Concept Development Plan Requirement, the consultant has met the requirements. The consultant has obtained concept approval by St. Mary's County Soil Conservation District on May 20, 2024, and St. Mary's County Department of Public Works and Transportation on October 31, 2024. The Leonard Town Planning Department has reviewed the concept plans and approved the concept submission to be presented to the Planning Commission. The consultant will be required to investigate the proposed tie-in to the existing pump station to ensure the pump station can handle the additional project flows. Action needed today, the applicant has requested concept approval for case number 3-24. Sheriff's Evidence Storage Building Facility, 20,611 square foot building with associated parking and utilities. Phase two is the new Sheriff's Headquarters, which is 26,750 square foot pad site. Okay, so the building is going to be two stories, so you would double that for square footage for parking lot calculations. Said property being part of St. Mary's County Governmental Center Complex, the Planning and Commission can vote to approve, approving conditions, delay, or deny the decision. And I have all the associated attachments with your packages. I have, uh, I guess it's Deputy Director Gary Whipple here from Public Works, and then I have the Sheriff's, um, Steve, Steve, you didn't tell me your last name. <laughs> Isn't Is that, that terrible? Steve Hall. Yes. Yeah. 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 And then, uh, I'm not a deputy. If you have any questions. Um, parking spaces. So there's, there's, there's 244 required, and then it exceeds it by 159. So over 400 parking spaces. Correct. And that's based on a need for that many or, or why so many? So I, I can summarize that. Two, really two elements. There's shift, shift work and then also the impound requirements for the, the use of the, of the vehicles that are in an impound lot. So that's what totals are driven by. So a lot of, so if you go over to the sheriff's department, a lot of times you'll see the police vehicles sitting up in the grass area there. So I imagine that some of those vehicles would be actually parked on the grass. Right, and they're also required to have a certain amount of vehicles that are in spare capacity for operational requirements. See, I have two questions. Um, my first one is on, oh, sorry, is, okay. <laughs> is uh, on colors. Do you, I know this is just a rendering, but I was wondering, do you, have you thought about what, how you're gonna make it aesthetically what you're gonna do on the outside of your buildings? Yeah, the, the color scheme is, is a, it's a rendering, it's a suggestion, mm -hmm. and those are type of comments are, 
uh, the comments that we look to, to receive from the town council and planning commission. Uh, we want to make sure that this reflects the same kind of architectural theme as the rest of the governmental center, but also has a, a little bit of uniqueness to it. So that was the thought. Okay. So you're trying to add a little flair, maybe, at some point, which is always a good thing. Um, I would, personally, I love teal. It's one of my favorite colors, but um, this building is really nice looking. I think it would look great with black. That's my suggestion, black trim. It's not very wild, though. It's not very unique. And then, and then my, my second, second question, question was, was uh, on the last statement on page that you just read, that Mike just read, it said, the consultant will be required to investigate the proposed tie-in to existing pump station to ensure the pump station can handle object additional projected flows. Can you tell us what that means? So we still have to do the, the sewer and water connections as part of the site plan approval. And so we're the consultants under contract to finish that work, to do some test pitting to locate where the sewer mains are, and then design the connection and the tie-ins. Right now, they're estimating for the phase one building, the evidence storage building, will require five EDUs, and for the headquarters building, it will require 15 EDUs. I don't have those calculations to actually review in any detail, but that's what we're that's what they're indicating the sewer capacity requirements to be. So they'll just make sure that everything is good for capacity. So, Laura, this is concept, so they don't have to have all that worked out at this point. It's still got to go through all the full engineering if, oh, if, and the architecturals and all that come back to you at final site plan. Right. So that was just, just referring just to what's going, going to happen. Right. right. Okay. So we will be meeting about how many EDUs they need. But there is an existing sewer pump station, and um, Mike was just pointing out that they need to make sure that that, that pump station can accommodate these new buildings. But that's all part of the engineering process, and it'll be coming back one more time for final site plan. Right. right, and if they can't accommodate it, then something. They would have to either upgrade the, the pump station or build another one. Okay. Right, my purpose was this is private, so I just wanted to ensure that we would take the flows that were proposed to it. Okay, thank you. Can I ask a clarifying question on the, on the, the rendering? So, you, I think you would think that the trim, instead of being that, that light. Um, teal. Teal. That's what, That's what it, I, I see. see. What do you, some people oh, okay, to teal. Okay, the teal. You, so you think that that should be black and then that light. That well, it's light darker. Stuff. Yeah, and and it, it darker. can be anything, really. Yeah, I, so. we, we don't have right, right. So, 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 over that, so I'm um, just saying a preference that she like. Right, okay. our general well, opinion is yeah. a little. That is my opinion. So, okay. this is really blend in with the other buildings out there. I will right. share through. Madam Vice Chair, I will take it in any color I can. <laughs> well, if teal's the only color you can get, I like teal. So, I mean. Uh, teal works for us. Very good. Is the road from uh, the parking lot that it looks like there's a. a a road that's going to go near the old library. So that's one of the, the um, there's only two ways in and out of this place, right? That's correct. There'll be a connection to uh, the parking lot for the Tuxet building right there on Leonard Hall Drive. And then there'll be the back entrance, which comes off Washington Street, um, past the Board of Elections building and into the back. You currently store vehicles back there in that area, correct? In, in that area, yes. yes. Yeah. And, and in the area where the headquarters building is going to be built, there's also some vehicle storage in the area. Yeah, there's a temporary trailer back there now for evidence storage or something? We have two. Two temporary? Yeah, we, we were ahead of schedule. We beat the, we beat the county. Okay. Because we don't want to do anything to impede the process. Okay. So, but those will go away? Yes, ma'am. Right. Yeah, there used to be some old brick buildings that were back behind where the armory is right now, and we demolished those in advance of construction. 
So we had to replace that storage with uh, some trailers that are temporarily behind Tyson Bill Lane. <coughs> This is just uh, just because it was drawn this way. The, uh, the actual specifics don't look quite as abrupt, but this this triangle piece that's out here is it? It's it's more of a it's just kind of a boxy area that you guys were unable to acquire with the whole piece of land. Actually, if, if you're talking about this section here, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that's topography, really. Um, it, it's kind of a ravine, and if anything, it's, it's going to be, uh, we'll, we'll use that for stormwater management. So I think when, when we were drawing the, the boundary lines, the consultant, they were, they were you know, they used basically a, a polygon feature on the GIS, didn't really have much, you know, gotcha. process. Gotcha. Sure, right compared to the site development, it just, just that was, that just, was just something, something to keep you guys to where the site was. was. Gotcha. Um, and I um, used GIS uh, to do that. So it was just kind of a It's, it's not, not a representation of the limits of the mm -hmm. for the project. And then and some of these, these um, where, where the where the, the new plants, plants are going, going they look like some, some sort of like border or buffers. buffers. Is there, um, like on the northeast portion, it looks like a bunch of it kind of looks like evergreens. evergreens. I don't know if I see any reference to it. What's the reasoning behind planning like that? It's right by the parking lot. I don't know if someone's the house is back there or something. Or? There's a house, and I think there was a request to have a buffer there. I mean, it's in our ordinance anyway. Gotcha. There's a box. If you look at the front, the front page of that little box, that's the house. Gotcha, okay. So it's to separate residential and because this is institutional zoning. So you have to have a buffer. Yeah. And then the landscaping plan, this is just kind of a, a concept. They will come back at final also if it's a detailed landscaping where they'll say what kind of trees and what kind of plant. Right, so, 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 so per the ordinance, you have to have a buffering between the commercial and residential piece of property. It also requires to have plantings uh, within the parking lots to separate the parking areas. And so that's why you're seeing a few trees. But in the, you can't really tell here, if you go back to the stormwater management section, there's microbiome retention facilities in between each one of those parks. You can even see it uh, right on the cover sheet. Uh, the parking islands, if you will, are, are actually fairly large. Uh, that they have microbiome retention facilities. If you go to C11.01, you can see the little, uh, I don't know, I don't know what to call them. I see them, yep. So those are the microbiome retention facility locations. They haven't necessarily been designed yet, but that's where, so there'll be plantings involved with those as well. Gotcha. And that's what you see on that map. Thank you, sir. Is there, um, so those are kind of planned in right now, that one particular spot I'm looking at, because I know there's a residence there. Are we going to run into where someone would come in and say, oh my gosh, this is happening right next to my house, and try to throw a fit? And then we tell them, well, we've got these plants planned. Because that's going to be significant for whoever lives back there. They've been living kind of back there for a long time, and then... There is an existing tree line that you can see on that site map that I'm providing. Yep. So some of those trees, are, they can't cross the property line. Right, right. right. So those would remain. Um, they have their own buffer kind of built in there. That's correct. Right. Too. Now there is a road that travels down right there along the property line. So I think that they would, might rather be excited about having additional trees there to buffer them. Gotcha. I, 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 I were you asking about the trees or were you asking about the, the use? Um, I was just kind of curious if, if kind of like what happened when we were talking about that land over by LES and there were a bunch of residents that came in and they were cranky that it was happening right next to their house. Well, yeah, that's going to happen. I mean, the zoning is correct, and they have a, a, a right to build this type of facility. And there are setbacks that they have to need, which 
um, Mike has already verified that they have. Um, so, I mean, you know, it's, you can't, you can't make everybody happy. Absolutely. But well, at the same time, they have met right. requirements. Well, it looks like they're planning to do some some something there that would I, I kind of buffer that. I had a conversation with the, the next door owner. I don't, it's coming to my mind that there was a, something that he came about, and that, so that's why there's some additional planting. I feel like there was something. Gotcha. There. Thank you, ma'am. I move to approve the request for concept site plan approval for case 324 evidence storage building facility associated parking utilities phase two new sheriff's headquarters pad site only located in the government center complex. A second. Aye. Aye. Critical area. Oh, okay. And they did a uh, planting agreement with the town to replace that actual square footage of the tree tree So it was, you know, her house as well as the square footage of the So she needs to have that good, and then that's how she did the good age to cover that square footage. I think it was 400 square feet. Oh, and that's right there on the curve, yes. that big tree. Yes. Um, I don't know if this is the appropriate place to bring this up, but I was thinking because it's such a drought this summer, is that what happened to the courthouse trees too? Did they just get damaged due to the weather? So, this is what I heard. I have no factual information, but so uh, white oak trees uh, and some red oak trees are experienced blight at this, at this time. time. And, and those, those trees, trees were infected were with that blight. blight. And, and they, they had, had multiple, multiple occasions where the branches just broke off that tree. tree. It nearly it hurt somebody. I saw that it was losing some branches. Yeah, yeah. so, so they, they in safety, safety and that kind of thing, they had the trees removed. And, and you probably will see that, that uh, it's, it's happening more in the Kansas area in North. But you'll see quite a few more come down now. Uh, they're just trying to head it off. Right. right. So Understandable. I noticed her tree was gone, and I think she's already uh, replanted a couple of trees. That's correct. Right. She I was out there and did an inspection of the plantings, uh, and she met or exceeded uh, the requirements. She switched some things around, so... She had a couple extra bushes, bushes which gave her more credit right, than just the grasses and, you know, that kind of thing. Any other questions? Okay, I'll move to adjourn.